This is John Steele reporting on Adventure. The gal in this story is a cross between Elizabeth Taylor, the Queen of Iran, and Marilyn Monroe. She's my candidate for the most beautiful dame in the world. I met her in North Africa. We had a lot of fun together. There were three of us. The gal, a guy named Cardu, and yours truly. I call this transcribed yarn, High Test. About 400 miles south of Tripoli is the area of the Libyan desert called Fezzan. Fezzan is just what any man-sized desert should be. The main oasis is a place called Seba, which is a fair-sized desert city. There's water in other places, if you can find it in time. But when I landed in Tripoli to the north, I wasn't thinking of making a pilgrimage into the desert. I was on my way home, hoping to get to New York by Christmas. That time of year, it's not particularly warm in North Africa. It's comfortably hot part of the day, then gets quite cool. Sometimes real cold by nightfall. Which leads up to just one thing. It was cool enough for me to doll up in a tuxedo and to drop in at a nightclub called the Embassy. It was my bad luck to run into a guy who's as fond of me as I am of him. Now, I don't mind a guy being a millionaire. I'd like to be one myself. And I can appreciate it if he spends his time just drifting around the world. That's the story of my life, too. But I don't go along with a fellow American whose idea of fun is to make a fool of himself abroad. That's what hurt. Because Cardu was a real two-fisted character who knew his way around. Good evening, Steele. What'll it be, Cardu? A double vodka with a dash of champagne. You heard him, Ollie. Yes, yes. Double scotch and soda for Mr. Cardu. Well, how do you like that? What are you doing here, Cardu? Having fun. Good, clean fun, I hope. Yes, and there is my idea of what we're talking about. My, my. You know who she is? No idea. Princess Zezar. So who is she? I just told you. Never heard of her. She is beautiful. Admit that, Steele. I admit it, which gets me where? Nowhere, my boy. I saw her first. Is that going to impress her? Well, she's out for fun. Who are the people, if you'll excuse the word, that are with her? Some broken-down European royalty. Now tell me who she is. She's a tribal princess from Fezzan. Quite a doll in any language. Yes, and she's looked over here once or twice. I wouldn't let her get away with that. (laughs) I think she's interested. She looks bored. Well, with that crummy bunch she's with. You figure she wants you to rescue her. You know, Steele, I might do just that. You see those two guys standing against the wall behind her? Yeah, they're her bodyguards. So long as you know. Oh, it'll be a calculated risk. Yeah. If I get into a jam, you move in and we'll clean up the joint, huh? If you drag me into any trouble, expect me to slug you. I'll remind you, boy. Now watch me pick this babe up. I watched. The princess not only laughed when he addressed her, but after a few moments of talk, she stood up and Carter was leading her towards me. Only about that time, the two bodyguards intervened, and so did a lot of her friends. Uh, It was good while it lasted last night. The club will sue us. Oh, I'll pay for the damage. You and I are flying down to Fazan. Hal, I am on my way to Monte Carlo. I chartered a small plane. We're leaving at noon. For Monte Carlo? For Fazan. I'm doing the flying, and you're paying all expenses. What's up, Steele? That girl is to be executed unless we show up. Even then, we may not be able to save her. Executed? Oh, some tribal custom she violated when she walked off from that table with you last night. Steele, come on. This is 1950. All right, when we get down there, you bring the natives up to date. They may be using the wrong calendar. It was just after sundown when we flew over a desert town called Birbir El Hasin on the Wadi El Agail. I landed the plane on the desert. About a hundred Arab warriors mounted on war camels met us and escorted us into the village. Later on, after we'd been fed and given a chance to wash up, we were led into a room that looked like something out of the Arabian Nights. A character who introduced himself as Racine briefed us on why we were there. 
I am the Princess Zesar's cousin. Okay, so what's the pitch? The princess position is somewhat delicate. Why? What has she done? She behaved improperly in Tripoli. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, you have an American expression, a pickup. She allowed herself to be picked up by you. Well, what's so bad about that? By allowing herself to be picked up by you, the princess is liable to the death penalty. Now, look. Barbaric? Yeah, very. But we cling to old custom. Well, it's time some changes were made. The issue is this. Perhaps the princess decided you were worthy of her without consulting us. Could be. Upon that depends her life. What? You can both save her life by submitting to a test. Test? All of us here who hold high office have undergone this test. Nothing you will be asked to do is impossible. I survived all the same tests. They still say something. <laughs> One question, Racine. Yes? Can this test prove... Uh... Fatal? Oh, yes. You may both die. I see. Courage will not always be a necessary quality. Wisdom may often be more useful than courage. Oh, well, chum, anything you can do, I can do better. In which case, the princess will live. That adds up. There is an open door to your left. Go into it. The door will close. Now, what's inside that room? Nothing. No? Come on, Cardo. Sure, I'll try anything once. Worst jails than this one. Look overhead. A small dome. Yeah. But get a load of that sheet of metal hanging from the center. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe a gong of some kind, then. Eh? It is a gong. Watch your eardrums if somebody starts going to work on it. What? Reminds me of something I once saw in China. A basic form of sound torture. Holy catfish. Put something over your ears. What kind of a crazy deal is this? Do what I tell you. Ah, oh, come on. Shut that lousy racket off up there. Come on. Shut that racket up. You hear me? You hear me? The vibrations of the big gong didn't take long in building up to the point where Cardu and I felt as if someone was going to work on our brains with a thousand sledgehammers. Just one thing stayed with me. Racine had said no matter what test we were put through, that test could be survived. I had his word for it. The grim fact was Cardo and I had to survive or the princess was going to die. I figured even if one of us lived, it might help. Anyway, the sound of the gong wasn't going to kill us. It might just drive us nuts. How long does this go on? You tell me. So help me, Steele. I can't stand this much more. Keep your hands pressed over your ears. All because of that day. Come on, come on. You'll learn if you live long enough. I can stand a lot of things to you, but I can't stand this. I can't stand it. Racket has stopped. Yeah, while you slept. Okay, pal, thanks. Any time, Cardo. You stayed awake through it? Well, there was no one to slug me. And I'd been through it once before in China. Hey, what? We're getting company. Mm -hmm. Well, you seem none the worse for your first experience. What did it prove? Nothing at all. It was simply a preliminary test. You have good nerves. You'll need them. I'll bet we will. You can come out now. Coffee will be served you. Then we'll continue. Coffee was served to us by pretty slave girls. and My pal Cardu didn't even make a pass at one. Then we were taken outside of the village to the banks of the Wadi. There wasn't a lot of water in the stream. It was about a quarter of a mile wide at the broadest point. But to make up for the lack of water, there was crocodiles. This was going to be fun. It can be done, you know. We have to cross that stream. There are seven crocodiles in the water. We are standing at the widest section of the stream. Down there, the stream is narrower. Up that way, even narrower. You have the choice of which part of the stream you cross. Oh, what more do we want? One thing you should know. If you choose to cross at either of the narrow sections, 
You will be whipped and stoned as you try to reach the water. Oh, well, that's for me. Steel, let's go. No. We wade and swim across the white part. You're out of your mind, Steel. Come on, I'm on my way. Oh, all right, I'll do it your way. Those lousy crocodiles coming this way. Come on, Steel, for Pete's sake, let's go Take your stand time. here. Take your time, stay right behind me. Don't need it to the left or to the right. Never mind your political platform. Okay, it's deep enough to swim. Come on. We swam. On either side of us, crocodiles started to close in. At one point, we swam between two of them. Their snapping jaws not ten inches away from us. At another point, two of the beasts started lashing the water with their tails. Cardo and I sweated it out. Curiously, the crocodiles didn't quite reach us. I noticed Racine and some of his boys riding their horses across the wadi further downstream. And when we got ashore, he was there to meet us. My congratulations. You're doing quite well. You're having fun? Uh, let me explain. You don't have to. Oh, let him. You did well to insist on choosing the middle of the widest area of the stream, Mr. Steele. Yeah, obviously. At any other point, the crocodiles would have reached you. Well, why didn't they reach us as it was then? They were held by long chains. Chains? There is just that one narrow path across the stream which they cannot quite reach. How did you figure that one out, Steele? Well, there had to be a way across. I was looking for it. I saw a couple of those crocodiles swimming. Suddenly, something seemed to hold them back when they reached the wide part. If you had chosen the narrower parts, you would have been stoned and whipped as punishment for stupidity, then killed by the crocodiles. Well, are we all through now? Oh, no. This is just the beginning. <laughs> I'd seen variations of the crocodile test before, but the next thing on the program was something new to me. It was a cool night, and we weren't allowed to dry off after leaving the water. We'd started to shiver. A few minutes later, we were conscious of perspiration pouring down our faces. Two half-naked characters showed up. Each one was holding a snake. The reptiles were about two feet long and almost black, some sort of a viper, I think. In any case, they were deadly poisonous. Now, you see how these men hold the snakes? The right hand grips them around the neck. The left hand grips them about the middle of the body. Now, look. These two men are not professional snake charmers. They are just two ordinary warriors. So, you see, the snakes can be held. Now, very carefully, transfer the snakes to your hands. It was a neat trick, but it was done. Cardo and I found ourselves holding the reptiles in our hands. I could feel the ripples of the smooth skin racing through my fingers as I held on for dear life. How long are we supposed to hold them? That is for you to decide. For us to decide? Just remember, the snakes are venomous. If you release them, they will strike. The moment one of your hands relaxes, in that moment, it will happen. I've got it, Steele. Let's hear about it. We wade into the water and we hold them under until they're dead. We might stumble. Well, we'll have to be careful. Cardo, one little stumble and your instinct is to reach out for support. And that'll be it. Yeah. All right, you think of something. Think carefully, my friends, and hold on to those snakes. Don't relax pressure for a moment. Strangle them, Steel. That's it. Strangle them. Try it for just a second. You'll have your hands full. More so than now. I tried it a second ago. You mean we, we couldn't even just drop them to the ground? The split second pressure is the least. They'll strike. Don't let go, Cardo. Well, think of something. Part of your idea was good just now. The water. Come on, do what I do. I can't hold this thing much longer, Steel. Come on, over here, to the edge of the water. Uh, now what? Kneel down. On your left knee. Kneel, yeah. All right. Careful. Don't overbalance. I'm okay. It's muddy here, see? Yeah? The ground's soft. Press the snake's head into the mud. Well, go on, do it. All right, all right. Careful now. Now do exactly what I'm doing. Start moving your right foot towards where you're holding the snake's neck in your right hand. Yeah? All right. Not not too fast, Cardo. You might overbalance yourself. I'm nearly there. Now get your right foot over the snake's neck. And make sure, make sure its head is deep in the ground as you can get it. All right. Now we'll have a full second to scramble back when we let go. And in that second, your right foot will automatically press the snake's head still further into the ground. Okay. Here we go. The gong was a test of nerves. The crocodiles, a test of wisdom. The snake, 
a test of resourcefulness. Well, what's left? Two more things. You can give up now if you wish. Only if we do... The princess dies. Yes. Okay, Steele, we keep going? Why not? You know, what burns me up is I didn't even get to go out with that dame. All I said was, hello. You may get to say goodbye to her. The next thing the boys came up with for Cardo and me was a fate worse than death, though I'm not so sure about that as I look back. We hadn't seen the princess, had no idea where she was. But to make up for that, we were shown another girl. This one was blonde. I don't think she was Arab. She could have been. I've seen plenty of blonde-haired Arab gals. Only this one looked sort of uh, Scandinavian. She wore her hair in two long braids that reached to her waist. Ah, uh, she was a gorgeous doll. Take it from my pal Cardu. We squatted on some cushions in a sort of oriental boudoir. Cardo and I and this girl. Just the three of us. And some nice mood music that came from somewhere around. The girl said nothing. She just looked starry-eyed. And after a while, she started to dance for us. Oh, what has the dance of the seven veils got that this one ain't got? Six veils. Yeah, but this is much better, much better. Oh, baby. Relax. She's for me, Steele. Figure it out. This is no time for figuring. Haven't you ever seen a dame before? No, not like this one. Why is she here, Cardo? To find out if we're mice or men. Could be. Sure it is. Only don't make any passes at her. That is why she's here. Now, wait a minute. This is Arab country. The true Arab's idea of good fun is the exquisite torture of self-denial. Oh, look at her, will you? Oh, hey, doll, don't you know it takes two to tango? Oh, right, sit down. Lay off, Steele. Sit down, you chump. This one I play the way I see Let it. Let her alone. Look, Steele, I wouldn't want to last up a perfectly good friendship. Then sit down. But I warn you, pal, don't spoil my boyish you fun, take you one know? step towards that girl and you'll have to fight your way to her. If that is the way you want it, then... Here... Oh! Wait a minute. Ah. Hold it, hold it. She's gone. Yeah, you see? You frightened her off. Well, let's settle our argument anyhow. Huh? All right. Always the resort to violence. Oh, it's you, is it? I was always within hearing, Mr. Cardew. The princess will still live, thanks to Mr. Steele's knowledge of our people. All right, Steele, so we played it your way again. You know, this could get sickening. Hey, uh, Racine, who was the blonde? No one you will ever meet again. Hey. She's one of the slave girls. Will you both come with me? <laughs> The dancing girl had been strictly an interlude. What came next was the last act. I wasn't too surprised when we saw what it was. We were taken to the edge of a lion pit. It was about 20 feet deep into the ground and about 60 feet in diameter. We were led down into it by way of a tunnel that opened directly into the pit. Once inside the pit, we saw an opening in the wall, a gateway. And behind the gate was a very angry lion. There is nothing false about that lion. So what are we supposed to do, choke it to death? Oh, no. As always, the decision is yours. Well, so far, it's been steals. Not this time. You can leave the pit, Mr. Cardew. Oh, no. It's an order. Look, this is my pal, Steele. We're a team. Not this time, Mr. Cardew. Mr. Steele will take the test by himself. You will follow him. How about that, Steele? A question, Racine. Yes? If one of us should fail and the other come through... The princess still lives? <laughs> we want her to live. That is why she is being given two separate chances. All right, suppose I come through. Wouldn't that be enough? But Mr. Steele goes first. Well, if I come through, Cardew needn't take the test. You would spoil our fun unless you both take the test. Oh, well, let's not spoil your fun. Now, if you will kindly leave the pit, my men will escort you. Steele. I know. Don't think about it. Well, good luck, Phil. You bet. See you around. Yeah. Now, Mr. Steele... What's the deal? First, come and look at the lion. Why not? He is a Nubian lion. Yeah, that's what I figured. Now, right opposite the lion, on the other side of the pit, there is the gateway through which you just came. Yeah. Now, once the lion is released, how long would it take him to reach that gateway? Oh, about uh, two seconds. If he was in a hurry. He'll be there in one. 
He always is. Okay, so? You will stand about halfway from here to the gateway. I'll have a head start. How long will it take you to get from the center of this pit to the gateway? Mm, 30 feet, I'd say about uh, two seconds. If I'm in a hurry, and I expect to be. In short, the lion should reach you before you can escape. Unless he's delayed. You will have to think of a way to delay him, then. Yeah, yeah. However, you may choose another possible way. One of my men is now placing a long spear in the center of the pit. If you like, you might take your chances with that. Uh, would you? <laughs> the decision is yours. You can still give up the idea and let the princess... I'll take my chances. The uh, gamble intrigues me. Then please stand in the center of the pit. How clever are you, Mr. Steele? I'll let you know afterwards. Oh, uh, just one favor. Yes? Let me take off my boots. Very well. Hobnails are not good for this kind of a situation. Yes, I agree. Well, I think I will leave you. Yeah, you do that. Now, as soon as I walk through that gateway, the lion's door will be raised and he will be free. Rossine walked away while I was taking off my boots. About that time, someone started pulling up the chain that held the door of the lion's cage. I threw one boot at the lion, then the second. Then I took off my jet propelled lightning. The boots took the animal by surprise for just those extra two seconds I needed. Yes, I didn't think you would be able to do it. Uh, you sound disappointed. I was thinking of the lion. He was so sure of you. Does Cardew have to go through that one? Oh, yes. Suppose I talk him out of it. We have your word. The princess is safe now. Let us say you must go through an extra test and suffer your friend to go through what you have just gone through. In any case, he must. The choice is no longer his or yours. Where is he? In a hut. He does not know how you fared. You may be dead for all he knows. Come this way. I cannot allow you to talk with him. This is where you stand, Mr. Cardew. When I walk through the gateway, we've just come through... The lion's door will be raised and he will be free. Why don't you tell me what happened to Steele? Is he okay? A question that hardly matters to you at this moment. I'm leaving you now. There is the long spear if you care to use it. Okay, we'll use the spear. <laughs> Lousy spear, it's no good. <laughs> I said in the beginning, I liked Cardew as much as he liked me, which was a whole lot, in case I gave you the wrong idea. Cardew didn't make that final test. He grabbed the spear. It was no good. It was broken. I hadn't figured on that. Yeah. Yeah, he died in that lion pit. But there was nothing the authorities could do about it. Way down in Faisan, there isn't much authority. And there are places like that still left in the world. Sure, the princess was spared. And last time I heard of her, she was in Paris, having the time of her life with people her tribe approved of. John Steele, Adventurer, was brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>